Welcome to Waiatea Fifth Estate, brought to you by Voyager Internet, independently tested by TrueNet as New Zealand's fastest ISP for home and business fibre internet connections. Call them on 0800 4 speed for $69 unlimited internet per month. <laughs> Welcome to Wadia for the state, where we wrap the most important news events with the best political panel on television. Joining us tonight to discuss the woman's boat to Gaza in studio, Green Party MP and participant in the woman's boat to Gaza, Marama Davidson, uh, Kyoto Gaza coordinator and human rights activist Roger Fowler, and uh, former convoy to Gaza participant and Palestinian rights activist Tali Williams. Thank you for joining us, panel. And remember, viewers, you can email us questions for tonight's show using our new and much, much, much shorter email. Try it out. W5E at facetv.co.nz. Oh, it's so much easier. Tonight's guest Twitter commentators are Melanie D, Sparis Palestine and Tama. Follow them tonight and join in the debate right now using the hashtag Watia Fifth Estate. Let's get on with the show. The brutal occupation of Palestine by Israel continues with, with no end in sight. The violence, the unspeakable degradation and the global bitterness this occupation provokes shows no sign of abating. Into this maelstrom of hate, a boat of women will try and sail aid to the people of Palestine. Now, last week we did invite the New Zealand Friends of Israel to appear on tonight's show, but they felt it was too short a notice for them to organise a spokesperson to appear, so they have sent me a three-page statement they would like me to read out on air. I'm not going to do that because that would take up most of the show, but I have taken what they've had to say and will ask their questions directly to our guests in our first round of discussion. Roger, the Friends of New Zealand, uh, the, the New Zealand Friends of Israel say there is a need to screen the goods that enter Gaza when terror organisations divert aid from those who need it to support militant activities. In Gaza, Hamas has misappropriated cement intended for reconstruction to build terror tunnels and has taken aid money to fund rockets and martyrs. Their, their, their use of uh, marks there. Uh, are you unintentionally fueling terror activity? No, well, all those accusations have been unproven. They're just rhetoric. Um, the flotillas, and there have been many flotillas mm. trying to break the siege of Gaza, uh, <laughs> never take uh, anything that uh, questionable uh, goods on them, uh, um, only aid and people. This particular boat, these particular boats on this flotilla uh, won't be big enough to take aid, uh, but the boats themselves, uh, the intention is to donate them to the people of Gaza as aid. Uh, when they arrive uh, in October. I looked at the banned list of items that can't be imported into Gaza uh, from 2010. Uh, you can't import fresh meat, toys, school books or chocolate. Yep. How does fresh meat, toys, school books or chocolate help terrorists? Well, the whole thing is ridiculous and it's just a form of collective punishment on the people of Gaza and Palestine. And... Um, it's completely unacceptable. It's illegal. It's inhumane. And the people of the world have to help to do something about it. Our leaders, world leaders, have let us down. There's been all sorts of resolutions condemning Israel, left, right and centre, from the United <coughs> Nations, uh, Red Cross and other uh, reputable bodies. But very, very little action. And this particular um, flotilla and the others that have gone before is really civil society of saying... Um, of, of doing something about it. And uh, yeah, that, that's, what we're, that's what we're planning to do. Marama, the New Zealand Friends of Israel say it is concerning to us that the Green Party was, with, would associate with a group like Kiora Gaza, which has openly justified violence against Israelis and supports an extremist one-state solution to the Arab-Palestinian-Israeli conflict rather than the almost universally supported and UN-backed two-state solution. Why, why are you Greens associating with, 
extremist over here. So I'm very clear and have had that direct communication and done my due diligence into this trip and know very well that Kia Gaza does not stand for violence, stands for peace. And I'm very clear why I'm going on this international woman's boat uh, to be woman's voice against war, to be woman's voice for peace building and peacemaking in communities, especially in during conflict um, times. And so I'm very clear this is a non-violent boat. We've all, as participants, have had had to declare yep. our commitment to this flotilla in word and deed for being a complete non-violent exercise um, and the focus is actually on restoring justice and peace in war zones. How, how will you deal with pro-Israeli groups attempting to misconstrue your mission because I've looked at a lot of the material that's been put out there it's pretty inflammatory and it's making all sorts of huge claims about uh, you, about the women who are going, and about why you're going. I mean, what, what, how, how do you deal with that? It's not that difficult, actually. I'm very focused on this being a uh, peaceful, non-violent flotilla, uh, women's voices against war. I know very well this also aligns with long-standing um, Green Party association with people's protests yep. and my personal commitment as an MP and yep. before I was an MP to people's protests. I'm going as an Indigenous woman to try and make contact with the um, women of Palestine and to support and be an advocate for their peace building efforts in their communities. It's not very hard to uh, not get pulled on the distraction techniques yeah, that have yeah. been thrown at me. Why is it unique to have women's voices in war zones? Because we don't normally, that's, that's a voice for reason, you know, hopefully you can sort of explain them. We just don't hear much. Why? Women's women's voices for peace, women's voices against war are crucial. Uh, war and violence impacts most severely on women and children. Women are most responsible and will have to bear a lot of the brunt of the burden, burden of both um, continuing to raise children, caring for their communities, caring for injured, as well as the work of rebuilding communities from the grassroots, also will fall heavily on women. Women's yeah. voices yeah. against yeah. war have long been missed and it's time that we put that right. Amen. Uh, Roger, the, the, the New Zealand Friends of Israel, they don't seem to like you much. Um, kia ora Gaza, this is what they say. Kia ora Gaza admitted that the last flotilla, which had a Māori TV crew on board, was a publicity stunt. This flotilla is no different, and it is disappointing to see the Green Party is involved. Given the needs of many different groups, it seems to us rather a waste to spend $25,000, which Kia ora Gaza hoped to raise, on a publicity stunt when that money could buy essential foods or medical supplies. Why do you hate Palestinians so much that you would spend $25,000 on publicity and not essential food and medical supplies? Roger, what's that about? Why do we hate pa Palestinians? Yeah, well, clearly, I'm, I'm, I'm insinuating from, okay. this, from, from this position that you well, do. Yes, OK, it's a very strange statement. Um, uh, first of all, uh, there's many myths being put forward. One that you just said, that, uh, that somehow we stand for violence when we're a peace group. Uh, another one that we support Hamas when we've never said we support Hamas. Um, and uh, the, the, these other allegations, really, if people want to research the truth into what's really real and what we actually say, we're, it's, everything's open. We have our, our website, we have a Facebook site. You can troll back on our website back over the last six years. You won't find any evidence of any of those allegations whatsoever. Tali, you've been on one of these convoys before. The New Zealand Friends of Israel state under the rule of Hamas, women in Gaza are not allowed to walk in public without a male chaperone, and domestic violence in Gaza has affected 63% of women, with almost half believing they deserved the beatings. So why would female activists help such a sexist regime? Um, this is a... <laughs> I, I, I do find it laughable when I hear that statement, and the reason is because when I talk to women in Gaza, the first thing they say to me is, Western women are always talking about, why are we wearing the hijab? You know, why do we put up with this oppression? And they say back to, and they say, tell your people back home that the most important thing for us is when the bombs stop and when we can drink you know, potable water that our we can and we can feed our children, then we'll worry about the hijab and then we'll worry about our rights. We can't do that when we can't even survive. 
do you think that that way of, 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 of trying to make it a feminist issue, which seems to be one of the counter arguments against uh, uh, Hamas, that that is actually just bypassing the reality of the occupation? Of course. And the, and the occupation and the, the besieging of Gaza is, is very anti-woman and affects uh, the of women course. of Gaza um, in, in awful ways. Yeah, and I've met and talked to many of them myself. And couldn't it be argued that in a war zone, a lot of that abuse and a lot of that anger and a lot of that frustration and explosive uh, 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 sort of domestic violence, that's actually connected again back to the occupation, isn't it? People living under violence and living under in a war zone. What were your um, uh, uh, what were your impressions when you were there? Um, I guess I mean basically what I saw were well, who I met were people whose lives were characterised by uh, by poverty, um, by daily struggle just to survive, and by random acts of violence from right. Israel, yep. um, and a people who wanted to be self-sustaining but couldn't because of this decade-long blockade which pre prevents them from being able to have a, a, an economy mm. um, because of the, um, the blockade on the import and export of goods. Yeah. So they can't actually sustain their own economy um, and on top of that they can't even uh, build their own infrastructure and society mm -hmm. because of the building supplies can't come in yep. right. and then bombs rain from above he creates this un totally untenable yeah. existence. And this for is people. decades and decades mm. and decades and decades. In some of the most intensely lived, area, urbanised areas that you're going to find. Mm. Um, uh, Marama, why do you think this flotilla is important and why do you think? It's important symbolically to have a, 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 a boat full of women. What, Listen, we, we, we have to call for an end to the blockade of Gaza, land, sea and air. Um, if we really want to help women, let's improve access to health and medical services. Let's lift unemployment. Let's ensure that there are good, healthy homes to live in. Let's actually um, stop untreated and partially treated sewerage from being pumped into all along the Gazan Strip so that families are, are unable to fish for themselves, provide any sort of um, industry for themselves using that shoreline. If we really want to help women, these are the calls that the women of Palestine are asking for international help mm, from. Mm. It is not my role, and I do find it a distraction again, to all of a sudden become feminist um, against uh, so-called um, oppression of women, are those same people, have they been long, lifelong feminists for all other feminist reasons or are they choosing to just on this particular issue distract away from the larger feminist issues as, which is we need to supply infrastructure, we need to end that blockade and allow for those vital materials to get through. The flotilla in 2010 saw Israel murder 10 activists in international waters. Why is this so important for you to, to effectively risk your life for? Because you are. You are. They, they have shown that they have no problems okay. using that level of force. I can only um, support what Roger Fowler says, which is that it is the Palestinians who are brave. My privilege is that I get to choose whether I can go in and out of a war zone, of a conflict zone. That is a privilege. There are people, children who wake up every day unable to make that choice. My role as an MP, my role as a Māori woman, is to use the platforms and the opportunities that come before me. We are not intending to get arrested. We are intending to be peaceful. There mm -hmm. should be no reason why the Israeli Defence Force wants to stop us from getting through. Right. I am going to come home safe and sound because this is a peace boat flotilla and it is my privilege to be able to choose to be part of this event. Roger, the grim reality is that Israel doesn't seem interested in peace and the occupation provokes Palestinian resistance which is perpetually sold as a justification to continue the occupation. New Zealand is on the Security Council. What should we be doing? We should be making a stronger voice uh, against the occupation. Just as Marama says, the nub of the matter is the occupation, the bombing and the siege. When that behaviour ends, which is really stuff from the dark ages, it should not be happening in these days. Uh, and the, the Palestinians are up against um, a might, which is uh, uh, the, the fifth strongest military might when you take into all the nuclear weaponry mm. that they have, mm. plus the three billion dollars of, of, um, of military hardware they receive every year from the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but the Palestinians in, in Gaza have no army, 
They have no navy. They have no air force. They used to ha uh, um, have an international airport. The Israelis even bombed that to shreds too. Mm. Um, so the odds are, are, are against them, and it's time that that behaviour stopped, yeah. and it'll only stop because of international pressure. Absolutely. L listen, Martin, what I wanted to also say is if the Israelis were genuinely concerned with their long-term security yeah. around the world, the evidence all shows that these severe and harsh approaches do not have an outcome of long-term sustainability for either side, for any party. Yeah. If they were really concerned, the Israelis who are distracting and wanting to attack my participation would be you know, better off spend their energy and their resource to aid Palestine to rebuild its infrastructure, to ensure that there are hospitals, three were bombed, to ensure that there are schools, good homes, good sewage treatment plants. Those are the things that will ensure the long-term sustainability, not just for Palestine, but also for Israel. Roger, I just want to get a quick question, uh, quick, quick, throw a quick question at you. Spark recently went to Israel on a tour on a business tour and they, they took a whole bunch of New Zealand businesses along with them. Should we be doing that? Um, well, I don't believe so. Part of the international pressure has been building up a boycott, uh, divestment and sanctions yep. movement which is graining, gaining great mm. support around the world and that is part of the pressure, international pressure that again people from civil society can exert to try and bring some normality and some sense to the situation and stop this intolerable situation, which is having an impact on the entire Middle East. Yeah. It's a pivotal situation. And until there is peace and justice in Palestine, there can be no peace in the Middle East. It's, it's great propaganda for ISIS, isn't it? And any other Islamic extremist exactly. who wants to be able to point to an example of incredible injustice, and it's just a recruitment tool, yes. isn't it? And they say, well, yeah. the Israelis get away with it, with yep. all this yep. violence, so can we. Tali, as, as an activist who, who, who chose to go there, do you believe that you changed anything? Do you think one person going can change anything? Um, I do believe that um, the solidarity that you show when you go over there on these flotillas um, and um, you know aid conv convoys is extremely important to the morale of um, the people of right, Gaza. Right. Um, and also it's extremely important to be able to bring back their direct experiences to New Zealand and explain to the public here what's going on because you've experienced it and spoken to those people mm. yourself. What, what was it like emotionally? Was it was it quite was it quite powerful to talk and be with these people who were living in circumstances day to day that were just absolutely, I think, um, gut a, a first world country if, if, if suddenly we had checkpoints everywhere and that kind of military occupation? Mm. I mean, what, what was it like for you emotionally? Um, I think it was, it was extremely powerful um, yeah. to be able to speak directly with people and I was just really honoured and humbled to be in the presence of people who had survived so much right. um, and just kept on, kept their dignity mm. through it all. <clears throat> Martin, I am also very interested in um, highlighting and raising advocacy for those Jewish and uh, Palestinian groups who are creating common ground for peace, yep. who are actually wanting to work from the grassroots and working for long-term sustainable peace, which they know mm. will eventuate for both Palestine and Israel when we as people can work together and actually make the solution justice and peace. It needs been. to be uh, important that there are a lot of brave Israeli people Absolutely. who are standing, Absolutely. standing up against this regime yep. as well. Yep. And, 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 and for them that stand is even more courageous because they get accused of being traitors to their own yes. people. It's a, very, it's a very difficult position, yep. isn't and it? And they get locked up as a result. Yep. Mm. Yeah, Mother, mother the, the Israelis can be brutal under the guise of security. Are, are, you, are you frightened for your safety? As I said, um, I put myself uh, forward and took up the opportunity knowing full well what I'm going. As I said again, this is a peaceful, uh, uh, non-violent boat. I am not afraid for my safety because I know very clear what the aims of this boat are. We should, we should um, not have to face any violent uh, confrontation from the Israeli Defence Force because we are very clear we will not have weapons. We have sworn our declaration to peace. Mm -hmm. I do not anticipate any danger. Um, when do you set sail? Uh, we will leave Messina uh, in Italy on the 23rd of September, so a few wow. weeks. Yeah. It's, it's next month. Yeah. You, you get done all your packing? 
What you, um, what little you, what backpack. You um, the organisation are such that they are they they are used to organising these flotillas. Yep. They give the participants very clear information about safety, yep. about what yep. to pack, about yep. what not to pack. I feel in really good hands about the way that this has been organised. Are people going to be able to follow you on social media? You you're still oh, going to be you're, you're tweeting, you're yeah, doing your Facebook. All of that all. will be an important part of why I'm going. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tali, what what advice would you offer, Marama? Um. Just, I don't know, I guess the main thing would just be to enjoy. Absolutely. And the people are incredible. The experience is amazing. Um, um, yeah, you'll get a lot from Thank it. You. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, let, 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 let's talk about America because I don't think you can really sort of understand the Israeli situation unless you've got an understanding of American politics. Uh, Hillary, Trump, which which one of them will be able to bring peace to the Middle East? Mm. Uh, I Roger? don't believe either of them. Will, mm. either, both of them seem to be um, mm. uh, supporting the Israeli occupation. So, 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 so status quo there? No, as the, and that comes back to what we were saying before. It's now up to civil society Absolutely. to make a stand, just as we did on apartheid yep. in South Africa, just as we did in Vietnam. Why do you think it's just so blocked politically to be able to get some type of peace in this part of the world? It, it, it seems that Israel just isn't willing to concede. Well, that's cor correct, and they are a major military might, um, mm. uh, and and supported uh, to mm. the hilt by the by the Americans. Mm. Um, that support's waning from time to time, mm. but it's still there. In fact, Obama's just a, promised another um, multi-billion-dollar load of, yep. of funding yep. for, for military hardware. Charlie, how do you deal with the um, the very angry reaction from, from, from pro-Israeli people. I mean, Marama is getting a wave of it at the moment. Was it something that you had to face? Um, I guess the main thing is uh, to just, to, is just you know in yourself what you've experienced. You've talked to the people who are directly affected and you know the facts. You're not moved mm. by the rhetoric mm. and the myth mm. um, mm. that's that just peddled out time and yeah. time again. What mm. should the New Zealand government be doing oh, here, Marama? What, 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 what having, we should the New Zealand government should absolutely be facing, uh, be placing more direct pressure, um, government to government yep. with Israel, and calling for the end of the blockade. Um, but you know, we, as Roger has said, it's it's been very hard to get that courage. Should from we our be pushing to get Palestine into the UN as seats there? I'm not sure about that. Um, I just know that for, um, and, and by saying that I mean I haven't looked into that right, yet. Right, um, right, right. But certainly the New Zealand government has a role to play in upholding human rights abuses, uh, upholding um, human rights and speaking out against abuses and depression all around the world, mm. and certainly this one included. Roger, um, how much have you raised of the 25000 that you needed? Uh, about half of it. So about far, half and, of it. And support is very strong. Yeah. yeah. How, 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 how much more you need? You need, need what, what, another 10, another 15 grand? Approximately about uh, just over 10. How can people help? Because there, there'll be a lot of people watching this show going, yep. here's yep. the money. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and uh, gen New Zealanders have been very, very generous. With yep. the first convoy we, we went on, uh, that I went led, um, we raised $100,000. Wow. Wow. That's that. and we, remarkable, we, and we isn't it? we donated three ambulances that we drove from London wow. in, in the convoy. Wow. We've since donated another two ambulances. Yep. In the meantime, the Israelis have blown up 26 ambulances during the last raid. Um, but the, the way people can support us, go to our website, kiotagaza.net, and all, all the information is there. Uh, someone sent through an email, uh, Marama's actions reflect all New Zealanders' thoughts about this issue, and that's just wrong, she doesn't. I'm not Absolutely sure not. about the last bit about that. <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of New Zealanders do support this, don't oh, they? Yes. they? They're yeah. very unhappy with the way the Palestinians have been treated. Um, and they so can see something practical being done. It's practical right. stand. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and so yeah. Kiwis support that, and they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to wrap the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we go, a final uh, word from our, our, our panellists. Um, will we, in our lifetime, see a free Palestine? Roger. I believe we will. This is a man-made crisis, mm. and so it can be re resolved by people. It's not a natural, uh, a natural uh, calamity. Uh, it's resolvable, and, and I believe with goodwill and building up a strong movement around the world that it can be done in so, our lifetime. So, Talia, I got incredibly emotional when I saw the, the, the Berlin Wall fall and incredibly emotional when Nelson Mandela was freed, and, th and those for me were important 
our world is getting a little bit better. Are we ever going to see that with Palestine? Um, again, I, I, like Roger, I believe so. I think if we internationally support a boycott, divestment sanctions campaign, um, we can put pressure on Israel to comply with international law and Palestinian rights. And we just need to take the profit out of occupation and right. apartheid. And you've got to see the trends. Israel is losing friends all over the place. I've hardly got any friends left, but, the, uh, but people are supporting the Palestinian struggle more and more around the world. Marama, are we ever going to wake up to a day where there's a free Palestine? I am encouraged by the strength and uprising of women all around the world who are standing against war, standing for peace, and highlighting the essential role that women have and can lead in this movement and this call. Amen, amen. I salute, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, panel. Uh, to my final word, I salute all of those people who are courageous enough to stand up to Israeli aggression. This is terrible. Occupation has created an ocean of needless suffering that must be forced to come to an end. Israel is the apartheid South Africa of our generation, and boycotting them culturally, economically, academically, and sporting-wise is the only honourable way to help bring this damaged wound to an end. Thank you, panellists. Thank you, Fano, for watching. We'll join you again tomorrow night, 7pm for Waitia for the State. Kia ora, and good night. Waitia for the State. Brought to you by Voyager Internet. Call them on 0800 4Speed.